Hi everyone, today I want to finally make a tutorial on the giant sugarcane farm we built on the Sycraft server. So first of all I want to make clear that this is not the best design for every situation. There are literally hundreds of other designs and you can't make a lot of mistakes when designing a sugarcane farm to be honest. But we had four requirements for our giant sugarcane farm and this farm design excels in all four points. So first of all it should be lag friendly. Yeah, obviously, if you build such a huge farm, then it should have a simple item collection system and we collect all the items just by yeah, water stream instead of a hop minecart, for example. Then all materials that are required to build should be attainable from renewable resources. So we mostly need slime blocks, redstone blocks and pistons and the crafting materials are all farmable and it should be somewhat compact. This farm with a size of 100 by 100 by 100 blocks produces 200,000 sugarcane items per hour and we don't have any lag issues at all. Since it's a modular design and very few people will build this farm in the scale we did on our Cycraft server, it probably doesn't make sense if I make a strict block by block tutorial. Instead, I'm going to explain all the components and show you how you can expand this farm on your own. It's not really complicated. So the basic idea is that we have two sticky pistons facing each other for slime block in between and an extension on the side right here. So first we power one of those sticky pistons and this will clear all the sugarcane blocks on this side and the items are mostly shot against the wall and then they would fall straight down. And after this piston has retracted, we're gonna extend the other one and clear the other side. So in between the blocks where the sugarcane plants are growing, we have the required water. And it doesn't matter if you have a water source or flowing water. And it also doesn't matter if you have white sand, red sand, pot soil, grass, coarse dirt or normal dirt, the sugarcane plants would grow at the same speed. Then since we have a redstone block here, we could actually extend the signal without any redstone dust wiring. So what would happen first, we're gonna power this piston here. The redstone block gets moved over to this side. And then this piston would also extend and so on. So basically get a chain reaction and you can expand the signal without any laggy redstone dust. So here's a quick demonstration. As you can see here, we're clearing of the sugarcane plants. But by chaining uh, yeah, the pistons with the redstone block in between, we get a little problem. The signal is shortened. So we get this effect that you might know from yeah, powering pistons in line with redstone blocks. It takes a while until the last piston is powered, but if you reject the redstone blocks, all of them would depower at once. So you can see here, all of them would depower at once. And basically the signal is shortened. So if I just use a normal stone button, then the last piston would drop its block because the signal is so short. And that's why we need to re-extend the signal at the end of this line. So basically, the longer your shuriken farm, the longer your input signal has to be. But also the delay in between powering sites has to be longer the longer your shuriken farm is. On Cycraft, we used a nine segment long design, which is approximately 100 blocks long. And the single length of a wooden button is enough to reach the very end, as you can see here. And the delay between powering sites is 16 redstone ticks. So now I'm going to show you how you can extend the signal at the end of the line right here. So to power the next lane. So here you need some normal blocks and then comparators like this, then normal blocks again. Then you need a torch and redstone dust on both sides. Here we need another yeah, solid block so the lines don't connect. And then we need a torch right here. And a non-movable block. On Cycraft we used medlins. We have a lot of medlins. Then here we need, again, 16 redstone ticks of delay. Another torch and a non-movable block right here. And this way could go um, yeah, all the way back and the signal is long enough. So basically those um, comparators are the pulse extender. So I've already put in the side where the signal would travel back afterwards. Also, let's take a quick look at it. And now this side extends 
and those plants are getting harvested. I already started to put in the water collection system. Um, you could also use normal ice blocks if you are careful with the light level. And then, yeah, just put in some water here on the side and the items will always be collected under this water um, which hydrates the sugarcane plants. And uh, what was important for us is that the height drop of the collection system is as low as possible. And in order to achieve that, we always put in a slab right here. And then yeah, here would be the, another slab for the items coming in from the other side. Basically, it would also be a water stream, um, at least until here. Depends how many layers you would build on the side. And then here the water goes in from here. And here we have another slab and another one right here and here. And so no matter where the items would come in, they would either fall down right here and they get flushed under the, the slab and come out to the other side. Or if they would come in where the slab is placed, then the water stream picks them up directly. And this way, no items are lost. Okay, next you could build as much lanes next to each other as you want. Or you could stack up. So now let's continue with stacking up, how that works. So again, you need some resin dust right here, then comparators, like this. But here you need a block, and another dust right here. Then you need a sticky piston, two slime blocks on top, and a redstone block right here. Then add more slime blocks like this. And the next sticky piston would be above this redstone block. And then we need another melon again. On any normal block, we also use a dropper or obsidian block. Then we want four repeaters on maximum delay. And another repeater on maximum delay right here. Redstone dust, then another melon and a sticky piston. That's how you can connect to higher layers. Um, yeah, now we also need some water. And to achieve that, just put some non removal block on top of the slime blocks. See, so here we have the next dirt block. Yeah, like this, and then water in between, sugar cane on top, and yeah, that's already there is to it. So of course, you don't want to activate the whole machine each time by pressing a button. So first I'm going to show you how you can make a 30 game tick signal, which is the length of the wooden button. So here is the input of a repeater just on the side. Then we need a pulse extender. And the input has to be right here, which is a monostable on three redstone ticks of delay. And then basically you can attach this to your clock. Um, yeah, ESO hopper clock, or basically any clock. Uh, let's also press the button here. You can see here, get the 30 game tick signal. It's all the way to back. Now this side. And also the top here, about next. It's enough if you harvest every 8 to 10 minutes. And I built up a little system right here. Um, so here we have an ESO hopper clock which is completely filled up with items, basically 320 items in there. Then this is just t, t flip flop and every eight and uh, I think half of minutes, it would activate the whole system, that's enough. All right, I hope everything is clear now and you could build and modify this farm for your own personal needs. If anything is unclear, you could also check this world download and our public server is still on. You could also check out the large farm there. Thanks a lot for watching, have a nice day, bye bye.